Welcome to my channel. On the heels of his almost three hour interview with Shannon Sharp on Club Shay Shay, Cat Williams has done a new interview with Willie D that's about an hour long. And he talks about a subject in there that I wanted to get to in the last one and, and just didn't. And it has to do with his relationship with God. And I really want you to see this because I have some things I want to discuss about it. But before I do that, I have to thank every single one of you for watching my videos. My channel wouldn't exist if it weren't for you. It's because I have people coming to see my videos and subscribing to them and liking and commenting and sharing them that I continue to do them. If that wasn't happening, I'd just quit. But you are coming, you are listening, you are commenting, and I'm enjoying the conversation and I'm enjoying the traffic. And I'm very, very thankful for it. So thank you. Thank you, every single one of you. Now, this interview that he did is really fascinating for a number of reasons. And I highly recommend that you watch the whole thing. And I'll put the link in the description. But this part here, I specifically want to focus in on. So I'm, I'm asking uh, some of these questions that I'm asking because I'm really trying to figure out, like, how did you develop your psyche? Like, you're a very insightful dude. Right. Just trying to figure out, like, like where did that start at? Can you pinpoint a specific time and space where you said, you know, yeah, um, I get it. I see what's going on. Yeah, yeah. I, <clears throat> probably like five years old. Hmm. Um, first and foremost, this is going to sound really, really weird, but um, I believed at that young age that you could have a relationship with God. And I know that that's kind of old fashioned now. Um, but when I was young, that's what I believed. And so I developed this relationship where we talk four or five times a day and we talk about everything and I'm coming to you when things are well and when it's not well. And if I ask for something, I know when you gave me what I asked for because it's the only time. So I... This is fascinating to me. And the reason why it is because this is exactly the type of relationship that I have with God. We talk as if we're sitting beside each other. We discuss the good, the bad of life, my plans for the future, everything about what I want and what I desire. And if I ask God for something, as long as it's asked in faith and love, I get it. And that is exactly the same relationship that he seems to have. And that's how I know that Cat is a true believer. I have little trouble in my mind reconciling that with his language on stage. But, you know, it's part of his act. And, and you know, Jesus Christ hung out with sinners, so who am I to judge? But... I can tell you for certain that he has a strong relationship with God. Understood at a young age that I wasn't like everybody else, that I was in a blessed position and that I had the ability to be able to make things happen if I could find the instructions and follow them. So, um, at five years old, that's how I thought. I knew when things were wrong with the Bible. I wasn't worried about authority because God was like the authority. And other than that, I got to tolerate you, but I, I, I'm not allowed to bow down. I'm like... <laughs> it's just uncanny to me how much the relationship he's describing with God is like the one that I have. That God is the authority in your life. And that 
anyone else who tries to exert authority over you, you just go, I'm sorry, but no. Because God is my boss, not you. I, I wish I could find a way to get everyone to have that kind of a relationship, but with God, I mean. But I guess you just have to want it really badly for it to happen. And so many people say they believe in God and say they want a relationship with God, but they don't really. They, they're, they're just going through the motions. Cat's not going through the motions. He really has a deep and abiding relationship with God. There's no question in my mind about that. Like that as, as a child. So my parents didn't do anything wrong. They just wanted me to live a life that I wasn't going to live. They wanted me to be this, and I was not free to live a double life. I can't be that and be what I'm trying to be. What was that they wanted you to be? Um, a part of their religion. Hmm. They were uh, very devout Christian? and religion. Christian. <clears throat> yes. Uh, the, uh, yeah. That's the same way for me. I, you know, religion is man-made. A relationship with God is not. That's the best way I know to describe it. It's... It's not like anything that you can learn in church or in most churches. There are a few that I'm aware of that that really teach genuine relationship with God, but most of them are just superficial. They just scratch the surface. They don't really get into the depth of what it means to have a one-on-one -on -one relationship with God. Cat clearly understands that clearly a branch of christianity yes at one point did you become a muslim at one point i became um several religions because that's the only way you can really find out what's going on in a religion um <laughs> religion is not something that you can just study the books about it and now you know about them um, I had to be a member of the Fruit of Islam in order to know. Um, Minister Farrakhan calls me his son. I, I, I was not um, regular even in uh, that endeavor, just because whoever the true God is, I don't play about him. And I understand that regardless of what you choose to call him, it's the same entity. And Yeah. That's it. No, that, that, once you that's study. it. That's golly days. It's amazing to me. Well, I guess maybe it's not because I know that if you have a real, true relationship with God, this is exactly the way you would think and the way you would talk, and and He's doing that. So that guarantees to me that He does, because He understands that when you have a relationship with God. All that religion stuff is just dross. And you see behind the facade, you see the real truth. You see what's really going on in the world. And you're not fooled by all the smoke and the mirrors and the obfuscation that the devil throws up. He, he's... He's a really amazing person. You'll learn in other parts of this that uh, he went to college when he was, t I think he said, 12. I think he's probably at least at the genius level. Of course, they don't use that term anymore because it's offensive. <laughs> but he's at least at the genius level, if not above that. I mean, I think it's probably his IQ is at least 150 or higher. Uh, he is a really amazing man 
and as I, I've gotten to know a little bit more about him, I'm really impressed by him. Because he's, he's honest to a fault, just like I am. He's, he's not afraid to say the truth, even if people think it hurts them. It's... <laughs> There's another part in here oh, that I really want you to hear. I, I've got to find it, and I hope I can. Uh, it's somewhere around here. Let's see. We'll, we'll play it and see. I said that's the only way I know to do it is right. And it wasn't in me. Well, I know there's a lot of advantages to be doing what you do being in the entertainment industry, but what's <laughs> like the, the biggest thing that you can't stand about this industry? Notice how he never responds to a question without thinking carefully about how he wants to answer it. And the ways that he answers it is clearly exactly what he wants to say. <laughs> it's very impressive to me. Nothing. I like it. Shit, I don't know who you think you're talking to. I like it. Now you, now you. <laughs> now let's. I love my op as myself. Yeah. I think it's great. On our side of things, it's flourishing. It's never been better. Um, all the people on our side are seeing that prayers do work and that you really um, have control of your mind more than you think you do. And if you could somehow possibly stop thinking the way you do and think another way, it might help you. And you'll know right away if it does. That's the benefit, is each one of these days you're getting could really be the one. The Bible talks about something called the renewed mind. When you get born again, you're made new. But you're living in the world, and so it doesn't take long for the influence of the devil to surround you and to start to pollute your thoughts. Um, the way I describe it, it's like a pigsty. You're living in a pigsty, and you can't help but get some of that on you. And so what the Bible talks about when it's talking about the renewed mind is that you have to constantly make your mind new again with regard to God because of the constant influence of the devil that is surrounding you. Think of yourself as being underwater. You're surrounded by water. That water is the devil, and there you are. And in order for you to get air, you have to go to God. And you have to get your mind right. Because if you panic and you start to try and breathe underwater, you're going to die. You're going to swallow the water and you're going to drown. That's exactly the way it is, the best way I know to describe it, and that's what he's talking about. What's one of the wildest things that has happened to you or, or you've seen happen in your time in this entertainment space? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry, Vlad. Um, I <laughs> I ain't seen nothing. <laughs> I I collect the footage, but I haven't seen anything. Um, you were doing so good, man. I mean, you was just doing so good, and then all of a sudden, you just decided. <laughs> well, no, here's the thing. Here's the thing. What, what you asked was, you said, hey, Wolf, <laughs> what do you hate about the sheep? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. I feel good. I feel like we're in a good position. Everything's going to be fine. Let's go, Coach Prime. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think 
when he's doing these interviews, he's having a conversation with God in his head. And he's getting advice from God on what to say and how to say it. And then he says it. That line about, hey, wolf, what do you think about the sheep? <laughs> it's so amazing. This man just fascinates me. <laughs> what do you think about we Coach Prime? What's up with Coach Prime? You, 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 have you been out there yet, Colorado? No, but I've, I've supported from afar. I, yeah. I, I'm saying <clears throat> anytime a, a great individual, regardless of what he does, finds something that he can be great in, like, that's going to work. Like, he, he is a motivating factor and an asset to it. He always has been since the Jerry Curl days. Um, those are the leaders of men that we discussed earlier. Um, uh, an eternal optimist, uh, someone that's clever and about books and hard work and discipline. Uh, you know, as a black person, we should be so lucky as to have you know, a black coach like that. And as a non-black person, what a great job. Man, you know, you just describe yourself, except the coach part. And then I take that back. You and, are a coach and, in your own and, right. And you as yeah. well. That's the whole thing. Like, these compliments are all shared by all of us. I'm going to let you watch the rest yourself. You don't need me to, to show you this stuff. But he's, he's fascinating to me. He really is fascinating to me. And uh, he's definitely a brother in Christ. I have no doubt of that. None whatsoever. I know that he believes in God. I know that he has a personal relationship with God. That he talks to God every day. And in that aspect of life, he and I are brothers. Well, I hope you enjoy watching it. Like I say, he's fascinating. And I pray that you will live abundantly. I pray that you'll be healthy and that you'll live a long life and that God will keep you safe from harm. And I pray that he'll do the same for every single person that you love. And I also pray that you'll be anxious for nothing, but in all things, through prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, you'll make your requests known to God. And the peace that passes all understanding will keep your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. This is the Vietnam era vet, out.